<laughs> Have you ever played Who's in My Mouth? Negative Ghost Rider. <laughs> Ghost Rider. In, in the words of Randy Jackson, that's going to be a no for me. Yeah, dog. that's going to be a no for me, dog. <laughs> no play that game. Hello, and thank you for listening to the Maximum Mediocrity Podcast. My name is David Shockley. And I'm Morgan Miller. And this is the podcast that interviews people that aren't famous, but damn well should be. So for our last podcast of the year, we invited someone on that should always be getting more credit for what they do. On this episode, we have firefighter, EMT, first responder, Scotty Mangum. Woo! Valley girl initiated. I love it. (laughs) Scotty, thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. I have a question, just to start things off. What is stopping you from changing your last name to Magnum? Everyone who already calls me Magnum because they're dyslexic. <laughs> <laughs> Don't lie. When I sent you his name, you thought it, uh, you thought that I misspelled his name. No, I, when she sent me your name, uh-huh. I thought, that's the coolest name ever. Like, yeah. I didn't even realize that it was Mangum. Everybody does it. And the funniest thing is, it's on my license plate. So, like, when I drive around, I literally, people go, stop. Look, oh, my God, look at this license plate. And they take pictures. And I'm like, at what point do you realize, does that not say Mangum? <laughs> <laughs> that must be an easy perception to tell that people don't really pay attention to everything. Exactly. <laughs> But it's just funny because I'll be looking in my mirror and this guy's like freaking out. And he's like, oh, oh my God, that looks so cool. He's like, oh, I got to take my phone out, take a picture of this. Clack, 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 clack. And I'm like, <laughs> you're an idiot. <laughs> you're an idiot. <laughs> maybe he or just ma- thinks your last name is actually really cool. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe he thinks you're the idiot because you don't know how to spell Magnum. <laughs> yeah, very true. Very true. The lady at the DMV thought the same thing. She was like, ah, I think somebody already has a la- uh, the license plate Magnum on their car. And I was like, well, look again. It's actually my last name. And she said, oh. Oh, yeah, they, they don't have that. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure they don't. Try again, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> do you have a Dodge, Dodge Magnum? I do not. That would be the ultimate. Yeah, that would be. Now, if you got a Dodge Mangum, that would be really cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, I used the, the other product, the gold one in the wrapper. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Endorsed here. <laughs> Endorsed here. Magnum, contact us, please. <laughs> please. So, Scotty, uh, how long have you been doing what you do? Four years, going on five. Okay. What made you, did you, were you an EMT first and then a firefighter? I was actually a firefighter first and then became an EMT uh, because I wanted to further my education. And a lot of firemen do, like, we do all emergency response. So we go out on calls anyway. So I want to be more prepared and be better able to help my patients when I go out there. Like, I could just sit there and get, like, EMS and uh, first responder and go out there as, like, a just basic cpr aed training but then i wouldn't know what happens when the real emts are on scene and they need help like i could just sit there and watch and i can assist and grab equipment but i can't really you know get hands-on unless it's like a cpr or something like that that would be easier for me to transfer into so i want to get more in depth into it you wanted to be more valuable yep when the when the time is needed that's a very noble way to look at it i'm going for paramedic too are you really yeah not right now but i'm going to like that, I might as well get the highest level. Might as well go full, full, full medic. Yep. <laughs> when you play, have you ever played like, uh, like World of Warcraft or any of those types of games, like oh, a RPG? Absolutely. Uh, do you ever play the healer? I sometimes do, but most of the time I play support because I just like big guns and putting a lot of ammo down range. <laughs> and God bless you. <laughs> and blowing stuff up. <laughs> well, we are going to start the podcast off the same way that we start off every single podcast. We're going to need a shot to loosen us up. Are you ready? Oh, let's take a shot. And. Morgan, what are we drinking today? New Amsterdam vodka. What are we cheering to today, David? We're cheersing to the support and big guns. Hell yeah. When it stings, it's love. Ah, <laughs> oh, it hurts so good. Excuse me. Sometimes love don't feel like it should. <laughs> and Morgan has brought a very special beer with her today. Morgan, what are we, what are we drinking to wash that vo- beautiful vodka down with? Woo. Imperial Cinnamon Roll Ale by Southern Tier. Tell me more about it. This beer doesn't hide what it is. It tells you exactly what you're getting into. Yes, it tastes exactly like a cinnamon roll. With this 8.6 alcohol content, this sweet ale would make the perfect 
brunch beer for you and your friends this holiday season. Have you have you tried the beer yet? I have. I made both of you try it. This is Ooh, really good. It is. It's, it's like good. you want know a secret? What? I'm not a huge beer fan, but I do like it. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a huge beer fan, but you like it. Yes. See. I'm more like reds, I like apple beers and stuff like that, like reds and strong bones. Oh, like stuff. ciders. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Ciders are really good. Cider, do you feel like ciders have really made a comeback in the last five years? I have. I feel like they've made like a strong punch and it's like it went from people who like didn't like beer, just not drinking beer and just drinking straight alcohol. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a shot of this. And they're like, no, we just want to drink. <laughs> Do you? What, what's your favorite liquor to drink? Definitely vodka. Vodka. I'm a vodka fan. Vodka fan. Do you do you do mixed drinks or you just do straight? I normally do mixed drinks. I don't normally do straight unless I want to get trashed. And then I do straight. Welcome to the show. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing that right now. Woo! What's your like drink of choice? Um, probably when I go out, I like whiskey sour. I like bringing it back. Okay, whiskey. Oh, whiskey sours are great. Yeah. I love making a whiskey sour. I wish you. I wish I would have known. I could have made you a fucking good whiskey Ooh, sour. I'd have tore that thing up. I'd have been trash before I got to the seat. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like a, a vodka cocktail. Like, what do you like? Do you like do you like vodka cranberries? Do you like martinis? All of them, actually. Like, I don't really have like a specific one. Like, I'll drink a vodka cranberry. I'll drink a martini. If anybody knows scrubs, apple teeny. Oh, cold teeny. I really like vodka tonics. I think it's a nice palate cleanser. Ooh, yeah, that's Body a good one. That's great. that's a good that's a good switch over drink. Mm-hmm. When you want to go drink something else, you'd have a vodka tonic in, in between. It, like clears the palate like water. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's like flavored water with but, a kick but, to your face. But water is for quitters. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Can you walk us through your most memorable time doing a shot of vodka? What happened immediately after? Oh, um, so my most memorable time was probably at a Halloween party I had like a few years back at my house and like we all did a shot and then I tried to get buffalo chicken dip out of the stove, but like I was already trashed, like really trashed. (laughs) So how did you go about doing it? (laughs) So I didn't know that the stove door came off (gasps) to be cleaned. (laughs) So I assumed I broke it. And I was like, no, I broke the stove. <laughs> Meanwhile, the buffalo chicken dip was not in there. Somebody removed it. The stove. <laughs> so it was like a double whammy of sadness all at the same time. <laughs> it's like, what do I do? I broke the stove. I just wrecked this property. This is going to be expensive to fix. And then I was a cable guy at the time. So I was like, I fix cable. I don't fix stoves. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> and like, it was just like a whole thing. And then somebody was like, so like, Meanwhile, the one half of the stove door stayed off because nobody knew how to fix it because everybody was just as trashed as I was. And the buffalo chicken dip was in the refrigerator. And then the next morning, I realized that it like came off. And then I just slid back on and everything was fine. <laughs> but I was so gone that I just assumed that I broke the stove and that was the end of it. I like that there's a moment. Did, was there a moment that you thought that you were turning into the Hulk? Yeah, it was definitely, <laughs> definitely was. All alcohol makes you feel like you're just breaking stuff unnecessarily. Did you, uh, at one moment where you're like, eh, I'll deal with that in the morning. That's, that's exactly what happened five seconds later. It was like, and another shot <laughs> since I broke the stove. <laughs> you, you reminded me of something that sometimes there's moments where I feel like I actually have superpowers. Yes. <laughs> Do you ever have that? Yes, all the time. And I, rem- I just remembered one time I was in middle school. And there was two doors to get to the outside. And then there was a beam in the middle because as for like the support for the two doors. Yeah. Damn. So I remember both of the doors were open. Mm-hmm. I walked through one of the doors, but I was looking down and I was convinced that I had walked through the center beam. <laughs> oh, damn. And I went, oh, my God. I can walk through fucking walls. <laughs> you just have to believe, Dave. Smack right into the wall. Yeah. <laughs> Cut to 30 seconds later when I tried it again. <laughs> so were Ramp you drunk then, too? I was, yeah, I was, I was in middle school. <laughs> of course I was drunk. <laughs> He's seen Harry Potter one too many times. He tried to run through a wall with a cart. He was like, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Has that ever happened to you, Morgan, where you, like, you thought you had superpowers? I feel like that was middle school. <laughs> middle school, really? When you're I, a kid, you always think you have super. Like, you think you're invincible. Uh, not that I can remember, but I did read this hilarious thing on Reddit the other day. That this guy kept touching this oven, and he kept feeling like these 
pringly feelings on his fingertips and he couldn't figure it out and it went all the way up to his shoulder and finally like a couple of days later he found out the stove was electrocuting him oh Oh my god so he wrote you know i thought that something was really wrong with me but no i'm just retarded (laughs) (laughs) i have a funny story about that about electrocution you're speaking to our resident electrician right now, Aww. so you, you better have a damn good story. I have a it's great actually, story. It's about actually a pretty good story. <laughs> so I got friends up in like upstate New York by like Albany, and like we go. That's up not to a L- superpower, by the way. Everybody has friends in upstate <laughs> Albany. I tried. All of us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No, you're right. Mine so, are actually in Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Buffalo, New York. Fans. Now that's a superpower. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we we go up there every year. Well. Like between one year and another year, um, they had lightning storm up there, and the lightning storm struck their uh, garage. Well, when it struck their garage, it destroyed their grounds in the garage, mm-hmm. which the refrigerator was plugged in, which destroyed the ground on the refrigerator, oh. as our resident electrician knows. So they got the grounds fixed, except for the refrigerator, which oh, no. is already <gasps> screwed. The refrigerator's fine unless you get out of their pool and then touch oh. their pool. <laughs> like, get out of their pool or your hands wet and then touch their refrigerator. Then oh. you get shocked by the refrigerator. So, like, you know, being in upstate New York in the middle of the woods with nothing better to do, we all got in a chain. <laughs> 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 One person wet their hand, <laughs> grabbed the refrigerator, and then we all got shocked real bad. <laughs> well... One of our one of one Sounds of the, like there was alcohol involved yeah. in that. <laughs> oh, there's there's always alcohol involved when we're Yeager. up there. <laughs> so well, one of the two of the kids were like, Oh, it's a great idea. Us two just gonna do it. So no. two of the kids <laughs> on a refrigerator. This is like a big appliance. So it's not like you know, a little toaster oven that has it's like pulling you know, a lot of electricity. Exactly. Because it has a big old compressor, it's gotta run. So <laughs> they grab it and he grabs the handle while the other kid grabs him and he grabs it the wrong way instead of grabbing it on outside he grabs the inside of the handle so as you know the way electricity works it contracts your muscles so when he got electrocuted his muscles contracted and his hand locked onto the refrigerator and he couldn't let go because his hand was locked onto the refrigerator oh my god well I don't he know when to his... laugh. I don't know if the kid has lived yet, so I'm I'm, I'm holding back my laughter. The suspension, and we come back next week. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> anyway, that's our show. Thank you very much for. Li- <laughs> and so he was holding the other kid's hand, and then he was locked into his hand. Yeah. and couldn't let go of his hand, and he couldn't let go of his hand because the other kid was grabbing him so hard that his hand couldn't let go. So these two kids are being shocked mercilessly. <laughs> yeah, and then you um, smack him with something wooden. No, our friend actually came up and drop kicked him off the refrigerator. Ran up and was like, boom, and oh. kicked the hand off the refrigerator. Kicked two, two like teenagers back onto the ground. And was like, I saved your life. And I was like, I'm sure we're going to figure out a better way to solve this problem. <laughs> then you you could have pushed him with like a broom handle. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of like the drop kicking because it is also the savior and also the punishment. Yeah, exactly. All right? He also it's got shocked. It's like, you're like, getting that's shocked a double to punishment. Death. You're getting shocked to death. And then now you're getting drop kicked for some reason. Exactly. But you're alive now. And welcome to the jungle. <laughs> Holy fuck. Th- that could have killed them, right? Yeah, I mean, long enough. Yeah, absolutely. Your heart runs on electricity. So if you think that you can put your heart out of um, out of rhythm. Um, I believe that uh, I've learned from the Care Bears that my heart runs on kindness. Thank you very much. Uh, I mean, <laughs> if you're purple and yellow and have rainbows on your stomach, absolutely. Hey, this is an audio podcast. <laughs> Nobody knows what I look like. Uh, very true, very true. <laughs> Every two years, I have to go to this code updation class. And they always, at the end, make us watch these safety videos. <laughs> that sounds like a bad idea. <laughs> so it's literally just us watching people get electrocuted. <laughs> and everybody's silent except for me and, like, my one friend who can't stop laughing. <laughs> like, the worst one was last year we had to go. And so these, like, four people were pushing this tall ladder. And it hit, like, the... um. It either hit or was in close enough proximity to the voltage jump to the metal ladder that it touched the ladder and one of the guys just start uh, just lit on fire. Oh my god! Holy crap! And I started shaking with laughter. <laughs> <laughs> so he's just, oh, everybody else let go. They got like a little. They got like a little. Oh, and they all let go. But the other guy like 
<laughs> like, like vice grip locked on because it's a lot. <laughs> That's what you imagine in like a cartoon. <laughs> like Home Alone, remember he goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was this a Wile E. Coyote cartoon? <laughs> no, it was a bunch of Indian guys. <laughs> As all of those videos happen to be. Why are they all Indian guys? Do you know? I don't know. That's just where they are recording it. But needless to say. That's so some every- investigative journalism I want to get into. Ooh. I just, the best part of the video is coming up. So this guy's on fire. People are like trying to figure out how to help him. This one guy like drop kicks the ladder. He gets zapped, thrown back. Drop kicking again. This common. <laughs> <laughs> but common my, electricity. My, <laughs> my absolute favorite person gets in their car. And drives away. Fuck this shit up, Mount. I just lean over to my friend and I go, "That's me." <laughs> <laughs> I actually could have been on one of your safety videos because I used to work for Comcast. Yeah. And I was setting up my ladder and I was like raising it, not paying attention to like the mid span in the back and like the lower cable. I mean, the lower wires on the pole are like cable, so most people don't know that. Like it's just like Verizon, Comcast, and it's all cable. And it's not supposed to be electrified unless something's fucked up on the pole. Then everything's electrified. That's that's me downloading port. I'm sorry. Exactly. So we have like <laughs> fiberglass ladders. Well, I like raised mine too high and hit the house power. And I was like, fuck. And, my, wow. and one of my friends were with me. We were like, yeah. Like nobody's touching the ladder. And it's just hanging there. And we're like, all right, what do we do? So we like grabbed something and smacked the ladder and pushed it off. And then it fell and broke somebody's fence. But Hey, that's better than <laughs> killing you. <laughs> Very much. As an expert in safety, this is concerning. Ooh. And in helping people save lives. It okay. sounds like you have been close to death <laughs> a lot of times. Absolutely. I mean, you got to be close to death to save people. We have a little bit of a game around here. We're going to hit you with the Maximum Mediocrity official firefighter pup quiz. Oh, crap. So here are the rules of the quiz. <laughs> it's five questions. No cheating. Oh. And <laughs> if you get at least three questions correct... Then as the creators of the quiz, since that means we cannot make a good quiz, me and Morgan have to take an additional shot. But if you fail to get three questions correct, then you have to take an additional shot. What if I just want to take a shot with you anyway? I love this theme. The last year, like, what? Is this the third guy that just wants to do the, uh, the shot with us? <laughs> I fucking like this guy. <laughs> fucking good on you. Gentlemen that we have on the show. Goddamn polite people. Absolutely, you can do the shot with us. It'll be amazing. <laughs> I just realized Woo! we hadn't answered the question. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't answer any questions. Just take shots. <laughs> Are you ready? From the top. From the top. Let's do it. Question one. Who started the first fire company in Philadelphia? Oh, that's going to be a hard pass because I'm not from Philadelphia, so I don't know who started the first fire company in Philadelphia. You may have heard of this person. He's very famous. Very famous guy. I'll also give you a hint. He invented the oven. The oven. You're very familiar with ovens. Yes. I broke a lot of them in my time. I mean, one of them in my time. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, you've had a lot of run-ins with appliances. <laughs> yeah, I did. Household appliances. <laughs> it's always the appliances. Household appliances <laughs> and wrestling moves. They, they <laughs> yes, very to true. save very people's true. lives. Very true. I'm going to have to take a pass on that one. I do not know. It is Benjamin Franklin. Ben Frank. Oh, Benny. Ooh. Speaking of that, my great-great-grandfather helped build that bridge. Just putting that out there. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, it'd be nice. You probably should know who he is. Maybe a little bit more about him. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Question two. What are firefighters statistically most likely to die from? This is cancer. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> But you're it's probably true. right. <laughs> it's very true. We are Actually, so... statistically, they are more likely to die from cancer than the average person. So that is technically correct. But I have multiple choice questions or oh. answers. Uh, either falling buildings, heart attacks, or fires. Heart attacks, stress, and overexertion is the number two killer next to or cancer. So stress and overexertion and cancer. Interesting. Interesting. So yes, heart attacks is correct. Boom. He's on the board. Woo. Question three. The fire pole was invented by a blank fire company in Chicago in the 1800s. An all black, all women, or all foreign fire company. I'm going to go for foreign for 500, Alex. All black. All black. I was thinking women because, you know, strippers. (laughs) (laughs) The only reason I didn't say that is because I know there was like no women in the fire companies back in the day. Nothing against them. But I knew that wasn't true. 
Question four. So you have, so you've gotten one correct. One correct. Um. Okay. So yeah, you're you're really teetering here. You yeah, got to get I'm these on, next I'm two on, correct. I'm on the edge of danger. Either way, I'm taking a shot. Glory. <laughs> Question four. Ancient blank firefighters sprayed themselves with water to make themselves less flammable. Were they ancient Mayans, Romans, or Japanese firefighters? I feel like the Japanese would do something crazy like that. A little racist, but correct. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Everybody knows if you have fire on there, steam burn is a real thing. <laughs> water on you. So if you have what water. Is st- steam. Oh, I guess it is. Because water gets hot. Water gets hot. So you go on a fire. Like, that's just like with our fire gear. We can be steam burned in our fire gear. So we'll be going in with a hose attacking a fire. And if we spray water on ourselves and we're in a hot enough atmosphere that the um, actual steam will burn us through our gear. Son and of a hot. bitch. And you can be steam burned and it sucks. I got steam burned on my ear one time. That hurt so bad. Really? Oh, Real man. bad. Yeah, I bet. The ear is a sensitive <laughs> part of the body. Yeah. That's like taking like boiling hot water and just go, I'm going to stick my ear in it. Oh, no. Really? Is that, <laughs> yeah. That's really what it feels like. Yeah. yeah I bet much. it is. Oh, my God. Now that he mentions like, it. Well, you deserve a shot after that. Let's just get through this quiz. All right. Question five. Final question. Uh, this is the break. Make or break. Boom, boom, boom. What percentage of American firefighters are women? I believe this oh, is uh, in 2016. Oh, 16 women. Hopefully there's more than 16. I know about women. 80% Grand of actually. them are volunteer. But what are women? I'm going to definitely. Percentage is a hard thing. I'm going to definitely say less than 10%. Oh. Okay, here we go. I have I have multiple choice. It's four options. Seven percent, fifteen percent, twelve percent, or two percent. Seven percent. Correct. He wins. Woo! Congratulations. Bah, 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 bah. I have a bonus question, on. actually. Ooh. According to Dwight Schrute. Oh, Dwight Schrute from the office. Yes. Who started the fire? Who <laughs> started the fire? Pam. Uh, actually, it was Ryan. Ryan started the fire. But uh, Ryan lit a. What was it? It was a um, cheese panini on fire in the toaster, and uh, everybody in the office had to evacuate. True, but Pam's his right hand woman, so. Pam and him have a beautiful <laughs> connection, almost as beautiful as Pam and Jim. But Dwight is caring and loving to Pam, a big soft spot. It's beautiful. Very true, very true. Mm-hmm. I love it. What would you like to do a shot of? Uh, I'm sorry, what would you like to <laughs> cheers to? Cheers. Cheers to good beers. Oh. You can cheers to anything. We'll, we'll cheers with you. Cheers to good beers. Cheers to good beers. It's only fair that I do the shot this time because I helped with the quiz. Woo. You're a good person, Morgan. I know. Is there any more wine? Oh, yeah, we'll get you more. Nah, you drank all of it. You guys gotta have some wine, too. Come on. My, my favorite wine glass. Whoa! <laughs> try it. It's the fucking best. Well, you. Let me try this wine. Oh, it tastes like candy. What? What? Uh, what is this wine, Scotty? A Jewish wine. That didn't answer the question. I don't question. know how to pronounce. This. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mazel Tov to me. That's fucking candy. That's Schmeckles. A, I told you. <laughs> did you say Schmeckles? Schmeckles. Yes, I did. Just yell penis. <laughs> Wait, is Schmeckles, is that, a, is that real? Yeah, that's real. That's that the real Yiddish thing? word for penis. Is this real life? They they <laughs> say that on Rick and Morty in one of the fiction... Oh my... <laughs> it's a, it's a good moment for them to say Schmeckles because right after that, Morty uh, is attempted rape. Yeah, that's right. Right after that. What, what, what is a Schmeckle? I don't understand sh- what that is. A Schmeckle is a penis. Penile. Fucking... God damn, that is yeah, good wine. I told you. The more yeah. you know. You guys gotta trust me. Fuck me, because I literally just yesterday I just bought fourteen bottles of wine. It should I have been this like, wine. I know. Fuck you for coming on today. <laughs> Speaking of Jewish wine, have you ever had Manischewitz? That's the shit. That's like grape juice that gets you fucked up. Manischewitz tastes like grape juice, but like just a little dry. So we review beers and wine. Just now, this is the first wine, buddy. Yeah, this is the first wine on the podcast. I mean, not that we know the name. (laughs) Ending out the year strong. So what's like the most interesting call you've ever been called on? Interesting how so? Interesting in a live patient or interesting in dead patient? Because there's two different types of interesting, not being like rude or like... 
I'm Poor K, no less. Dose. Why not both? Well, the most interesting one with an alive patient would definitely have to be um, this woman that uh, we went to a call on. I was actually on the fire truck. I was on the ambulance this day. Mm-hmm. And we went, and this lady was super intoxicated. Mm, like we are? Yes. No, the feels. Respect. But like a drunk, <laughs> and she was like all over the place. Well, the ambulance crew, which two little girls couldn't handle, like not little, but they were, you know, women, but they were just smaller. Small women. <laughs> yes. And I this understand. was a bigger woman, not like a fat woman, just like Talk. generally bigger than <laughs> these big. Di- like normal yeah. size, but to them, <laughs> right. Big. Exactly. So uh, she was being very uh, combative, and we didn't have cops. Not combative, like they, she was hitting us, but like she just didn't want to listen. So mm-hmm. we asked her to step out to the ambulance. Her sister was very worried about her and, and her well being. So um, she didn't want to step out the ambulance. She, oh, I have to use the bathroom. And then she was sitting in the bathroom and not come out. <laughs> <laughs> and then so we had to go and get her. It got to the point where. We literally were like fighting this woman out of the house and I had to step in, bear hug her, pick her up off of her feet and then walk her down the steps and set her on a stretcher. So that was like pretty fun and interesting. Like not the like, you know, craziest thing to ever happen, but it's pretty fun and like interesting on how it happened. That is interesting. So I actually have a question about that. Uh, If somebody clearly, obviously she didn't want to go. Yes. So what are the, what are those circumstances like when so can you say okay fuck it you don't want to help i don't want to fucking help you circumstances are um what we call alert and oriented so most people we call alert and oriented you'll hear a lot of emts or firefighters say a and o times four so that means they're alert and oriented times four they know like who they are where they are what you know year they're in Who's their president? Stuff like that. Like how many quarters are in a dollar? Like simple questions like that. Mm -hmm. That means they're completely alert and oriented and able to make their own decisions. And they're not impaired by anything. Nice. Okay. So when you're impaired by something, you can't completely make a level-headed decision. Yes. On your health and well-being. So like where we run into this problem is diabetics. So people who are diabetics and they don't take their sugar and then we come and we give them glucose and we get their sugar back up before they're not a no times four because most of the time they're, you know, out of their mind. They, they, they're not in their right state of mind. Mm-hmm. But when we give them the glucose, they become back in their state of mind because their sugar has evened out. But the thing with glucose is it wears off. So they can then decline services. Oh, I don't want your help anymore. But then we have to talk to them. Like, you realize the glucose is going to wear off. But most of them, what happens is they've been to the hospital so much, they just don't want to go back. They know the process. They know what they're going to have to do. They don't want to go sit and waste half their day in the hospital yeah. for them to give them the right sugar so they could be right at their sugar because they're not paying attention or taking doing what they're supposed to. So most of the time, we're very, like helpful people we try to help people and we understand so we gave you the good clothes we understand. that is i'm sorry that no. is should probably be the new slogan for emts we try to help people yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> very true that's but, a t-shirt very, very true so uh when they when they come back and they're they're very um like oriented we'll go okay well, you don't have to go to the hospital but you have to have some Cheerios, you have to have peanut butter sandwich, you have to have something that's going to put sugar in your system, that's going to stay in your system and like distribute it until you can get like a solid meal of better. So if they can get something like a snack or something, which most of them do have or they're in an area they can get and we watch them eat it, then we're fine on releasing them because we know their sugar's not going to plummet like they did before. The glucose we give is literally like a sugary paste that has like a little bit of flavor into it. But have you only- tasted it? What's the flavor? Um, some of them are different. Some of them like lemon, some of them like just like simple, like blueberry. They're not like the greatest tasting things in the world, but they they try to do like Thanksgiving dinner. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) But they try to do like enough to be like, okay, we're not going to be, you know, they're not fucking Willy Wonka. Yeah. Evil people. However, I'd be interested in fucking Willy Wonka. Just so we're clear. All right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Are you talking about, um. Johnny Depp or Gene Wilder? Oh, Gene Wilder. Fuck Johnny Depp as... as I mean, oh. bucka, 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 that little flute he's got. I can right. play that fucking flute. Oh, yeah? <laughs> on his nutsack. Uh, uh, you mean skin flute, right? Yes. Skin ah. flute. Okay. Obviously. We got it. I'm very fluent in skin <laughs> <laughs> We all know, David. Yes. From the top. All right. No, but uh. back, circling back, best dead case ever. Probably, like, there's no 
best dead case. Oh, shush. You know what I there. meant. Everybody get your alcohol ready. <laughs> we're going on a journey. So, like, we're not, like, totally insensitive, but we got to have some sort of, like, you know, interesting thing. Because, like, you go on all sorts of different type of cases. But anyway, like, You become no offense. numb to it, I imagine, yeah. right? And you have so, to make sort of in a way, yeah. yeah. Like you just get used to it. Like people die. It's just like an everyday thing. Unless it's somebody you know, then it's a fucking whole different thing. Yeah. But uh, uh, do you um do you have to leave the case if you know the person? Um, it's not like that. I mean, most of the time, if we know the person, we have like we're a brotherhood, honestly. So like we know the person, and we tell our partner or somebody else knows we know the person. They'll probably remove us from it. And, like, if it's just one ambulance, which normally dead people aren't just one ambulance, there are at least two in a fire truck and a paramedic unit in, the, in Newcastle County. That's not everywhere for all you out-of-state listeners. <laughs> 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 but in Newcastle County, that's what it is. So if they know, they'll basically, like, they will, like, so our friend will, like, or somebody will remove us, whoever's in charge of the scene, will remove us from the scene. Um, unless, like, it's impairing their first care. So if like they just died and they're still within like the save ratio, they're not rigored and like stiff, like mm-hmm. you know, like a rigor mannequin, mortis. honestly, yeah, with rigor mortis set- setting in, and we can save them. We're gonna start obviously if you know the person, you're gonna start CPR unless you like really hate the person, or the <laughs> other person's gonna start CPR. Somebody's gonna start CPR until other people get on scene where we can get an extra BLS unit, which is basic life support unit, which the EMTs come in. Um, on scene to to take over so we can be removed off a of scene so like we we don't get like removed off the case necessarily it's like it's just kind of like better that we not be there like we just be there and support and we not act because you know emotions take the best of people regardless yeah. of the situation like everybody's in that crappy situation but anyway back to the funny story we're gonna bring it back and um well, we we walked in a house and a guy was passed away and um, there was a, a choice object next to this older gentleman in the shape of a schnitzel <laughs> right a, next to him. And snitzel? his partner oh. was like, schmeckle? yeah, schmeckle, schmeckle. Let's not bring the Jewish dick. people into this. Yeah. <laughs> he made dick. Yeah. So there was like a little plastic one of those sitting right next to him and uh they were in some uh other affairs and his partner was in the other room in a robe so you can understand what happened we're doing cpr oh on his partner scandalous yes in another room while he's in the other room there's a really small room that day so we actually had to like pick him up and pull him out to a bigger room so we can do like proper cpr because it was like the size of like a coat closet but it was like an office with like a desk and stuff in it they fucking in a closet because they in the closet type. yeah yeah very true very true so uh that was like very interesting <laughs> um that and one more that's like right up there with it that like some people may not understand, but most of the time when we do CPR and stuff like that, we don't have music in the background. Huh? huh. And like it's on your head. Staying alive, staying alive. And that's what we used to. That's the beat we used to do CPR to. Yes. But I actually know that we were in a. Um, Did you take I'm a sorry. class too? No, that's a, no, but I also. I'm sorry. No, At first, I, I was afraid. It's the, I was petrified. <laughs> the beginning of that song. <laughs> I know. It's the same. It's the same beats per minute yeah. as. Uh, another one bites the dust. Yep. Just another so you one know. bites the dust. Well, that one's not as like mm. cheery to do it to. You don't want <laughs> them to bite the dust. I just, it's a fun fact I know. Okay. So we don't normally do a lot of music. Well, normally CPR is in somebody's house or something like that or like something like that. Well, this happened to be in a certain store that sells like bulk goods that's not Costco in the state of Delaware. <laughs> in the bathroom pre- it may or may not have a provocative name <laughs> exactly i'm glad everybody else thinks about that when they see that store <laughs> so we're in the bathroom doing uh cpr to that and uh there was music playing in the background and i thought that was like quite awesome because like we don't normally get to do that all the time what was so, the song like, can you remember i do not remember oh, it's just like it. um one of one of my bls providers actually pointed that out and i was like oh wait there is music in the background and then my best friend was also on scene because she's a paramedic. 
so she was on scene plus like so it's kind of like hard to be like it's kind of hard like when you're in the ems world and you don't see the person all the time but then you see him on a call and it's kind of hard to be like this person's dead but hey what's up buddy hey how you doing hey girl hey, <laughs> hey. exactly so like we're like i totally to, like, get it be like very professional and take care of the patient but we're also like yes my best friend look at my best friend look at my best friend <laughs> <laughs> i have the same thing i have a couple of guys that i work with but i don't get to work with a lot but i'm like i still got to do work but hi <laughs> hi Carmen. let me see your baby pictures please so baby, um, is baby pictures now no but yes those are my dead and alive stories uh, 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 uh. dead and alive dead and alive Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like you do try to keep it professional if somebody has just died. Yes, hey, we, would... we try to keep it very professional. And honestly, like, not to, like, you know, this is, like, the lighter side of things and the part of, like, EMTs and EMS you don't see. So I don't want people to take it the wrong way. But honestly, I treat every patient like if it was a family member. No, no BS. Like, I, I seriously do that, like, because, like, I'm like, you never know who these people are. These people could be, like, the greatest people in the world that would give you, like, their last penny. And sometimes they can be the other, but you don't know that. So you got to treat them like they're the greatest people in the world. And you got to do everything you can to save them with everything we have. Like, we're expected to be perfect every time. Not saying we're not perfect nine times out of ten. But there's always that one time where we're having an off day or stuff just doesn't go the way we're supposed to. Or your gear wasn't packed the way it's supposed to, even though or we you check it every pants. day. Like, it's, the stuff happens. Just normal human error stuff that happens exactly. to everybody on every job ever. Yep. Millie rocking on any block. But just just to circle back, um, a schnitzel is a... F- <laughs> <laughs> to the schnitzel. The schnitzel is um, a, a flat piece of chicken that is fried. A German dish, in fact. Oh, well, how do you know there wasn't like... You know, chicken next to the guy. I right. assume that we were talking about a dick, uh, um, a dildo. I thought it was that's, chicken. That's that's what we were talking about. I'm when not, when I'm you said it, there, I was. I but like I say, schnitzel because I'm like hungry all the time. I'm fat. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> what's the busiest time of year for you? Busiest time of year. <laughs> so it's the most wonderful time of the year right now. So it was yes. the busiest time of the year for, for like you. for like EMS or fire because there's like two different like EMS. Por que no los dos. Por que no los dos. All right. So for fire, we're would, long form would probably be around like fall when everything's dried out and so everything right like that. Oh, really? And yeah. then um, or we're switching over into winter. Because everybody wants to start their fireplace. They want to put wood in their fireplace. Everybody wants to start their heaters after not starting their heaters all summer. And then they backfire and catch on fire. And then to be they... fair, it's totally natural to not start your fucking heater in the summer. Yeah, absolutely. Just want to make sure we're clear. I, I agree. I'm not saying. But before this, when the summer starts and you stop using your heater, you should change the filter. And when you don't change the filter at all, you <laughs> know. PSA. <laughs> PSA. Uh, there are things that are built up in your filter, and if you have like a oil burner or something like that that will catch fire, those things will catch fire because you never change your filter at all, especially if you have pets in your house. Mm, yeah, all the, all the pet stuff, all the pet dander and dust gets right up in that thing. So, fall is the busiest for firefighters, correct? So, EMT, definitely holiday season. The reason I said holiday <laughs> season is because. That's when everybody travels here, and that's when everybody travels away. So most people are home on holiday seasons. So a lot of people call 911 for multiple different reasons. My turkey's on fire in the oven, or my grandma just came from Florida and passed out because she's not used to this type of weather. Ah, because a lot of change in the environment. Yeah, there's a lot of change in the environment. The body's a very adaptable thing, but at the same time, like you have to be very careful with it. If I go from living in the Bahamas my whole life and then I go up to Norway and I jump oh. off the plane, I'm going to freeze into an icicle and die. <laughs> Not yeah, you would. <laughs> in that order. But that's what you would feel like walking off the plane because you're used to such a hot, warm temperature. Mm-hmm. Just like with the U.S., temperatures change. Just from the East Coast. If you go from Maine to Florida, oh it, no, <laughs> it's a shock. I had to drive to Florida when I had to go get my dog, Titan. 
I didn't drive to Florida. I actually drove to Georgia to pick them up. But then we drove to Florida because I have friends in Florida because there's only a couple hours more. And I was like, let's go to Florida. Let's go to Florida. We're already right let's take here a by nap. Georgia. And Titan is also a very adorable dog. We saw a picture. Yeah. Adorable He's cute. Dog. Super fluffy. He's fluffy. A little, floof. yeah, a little floof a lot. Anyway. R slash floof. <laughs> and so we, we go all the way down to Florida. And then I step out of the, get out of the car. And I'm like, oh, why is it so hot? Because we just came from up he north. Says in the middle of Florida. <laughs> yes. We just came from up north. And like I'm used to like I had the temperature set in the car. And it's an automated temperature. So it just changes without me knowing and just keeps the proper temperature. So I don't feel a difference until I step out of the car and die of a heat stroke because I got long sleeves on. <laughs> and it's fall. <laughs> so when, um, when I was about 16, we took my grandmother for her, in my mind, I call it the defecation. Um, right before she died, we took her on vacation to Disney World, but we went in Ooh. the fucking summer. Oh, Lord oh. Jesus. It was so hot. We couldn't do things with her. Like, Sounds inappropriate. <laughs> for the viewers back home, I waggled my eyebrows. <laughs> Hashtag schnitzel. Hashtag schnitzel. <laughs> uh, but no, for real, we wanted to go through Epcot. We weren't walking Epcot. We were at the fucking water park. The whole time. No, almost the whole time. Are you married? Lazy River for life. Yo, I love the Lazy River. <laughs> Pool with the bar. Pool with the bar. Sorry. Pool with the bar. Or bar with, with the bar. pool. Swim bar up bar. Pool. Swim. All right. That's bar that. swims to you. Bar swims. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, cheers. <laughs> cheers. I'm just I'm saying. I'm going to create that a place be, that the you, bar comes to you. I'm just saying. I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You just put your number in and then the bar goes, you're first. What would you like? Are you married? I am not. Are you have a girlfriend? I am not. Perfect. Y- you shave your balls? I am not. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I do shave my balls. <laughs> hey, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> it's- Nobody wants to go down on Chewbacca, just saying. Accurate. <laughs> Accurate. PSA, shave your balls, people. Shave Ain't nobody looking at hairy nuts. That- no. Nobody no. ever. But. You don't have to like shave like your whole general area. You just got to bring it down to a general little area. Roar. I do shave my balls. I mean, I don't like they don't get like super hairy, but I do trim them. I would say. Would you say? Yeah, I would trim them. Do you do a fun design? I do not do a design. Do you design I'm them into a fire skilled. hose. <laughs> um, I'm a big it fan a of the triangle hose. shape. Does it say staying alive? The, Br- the Bermuda ha, Triangle. Ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> everything gets lost in yes, it. Yes, everything gets lost. <laughs> Nothing comes back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually looking at like cruises to the huh. to the Bermuda to Bermuda. And I was like, oh no, I know this <laughs> fucking nah, game. Nah, that's <laughs> a yeah. trap. Fool me once. Bermuda. <laughs> I saw Discovery Channel fucking <laughs> movies about Bermuda. Bermuda fucking Cruise ships of people never come back. <laughs> oh no. So I asked because if you're if you're dating anybody, because we're trying to help. Mm-hmm. Here on the Maximum Mediocrity podcast, we just want to help people better themselves. Ooh. So if you wouldn't mind, I have a list of <laughs> some of single the, suitors. Oh, I'm sorry. I have a list of some of the, <laughs> some of the worst uh, firefighter pickup lines. Oh. And uh, if you wouldn't mind uh, choosing your favorites, maybe reading some for si, us. Si, 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 si. And I want to see how it hits hits our ears. And uh, we'll probably give a rating on uh, whether or not that's a good one or not. So that's you're just good. over here speaking Spanish, but you didn't know what por qué no los dos meant. I, you didn't give me, you said it fast. I didn't get a chance You looked to... at me like I had 17 heads. Because you were like, por qué no los And I was like, yes, 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> All the drywallers have taught me to speak Spanish very fluently. All right. Shall I read all, all of these into the uh, Read as many as you're comfortable with. See. Okay. Care to see my hose bed? <laughs> <laughs> it's full of water. Come get squirted with it. I'm oh, sorry. I added to that one. Oh, I was going to say. <laughs> He's going rogue. Oh. <laughs> going rogue. <laughs> Don't prime the pump unless you want to uh, squirt a little water. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Girl in the bar, what do you do for a living? Firefighter. I make the six o'clock news. Ooh. Ooh. I'd say I make wet things wet. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Take a hose, put water on it, make it wet. I, li- I liked it. it the was vagina, good. The vagina good. gets wet. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Does the vagina get wet? <laughs> Does it? Does um, it? Good if question. you do the right thing Usually. at the right time. Not with that pickup line. <laughs> well, before the age of 50. <laughs> yes. 
hey, handsome, do you want to play firefighters? Together, we can practice stop, drop, and roll. Oh! Ooh, I'm going to roll into your bannies. Anyway. Oh, uh-huh. look. <laughs> I picked that one specifically because it's uh, you're supposed to say it to a man. Ah, there you go. <laughs> we know uh, your game ooh. with all that schnitzel. We, we, <laughs> the schnitzel's everywhere. We appeal to everybody here, apparently, except There's for the There's sausages Nazis. all around the apartment. Don't let them lie the to Nazis. you. <laughs> Pick up a line. I'm a firefighter. <laughs> <laughs> and then they walk away. <laughs> that has to work. Have you ever tried that line? I have not. You should really try that one because when I was doing the research for pick, firefighter pickup lines, that one showed up every single time. Somebody's into it. Someone's into it, but like they sell lots of calendars. Most like that. of the people are in. Oh, excuse me, correction. Most of the people who are into firefighters, because you know we live in 2018. Most people who are into firefighters are looking for ab six pack, super buff with like suspenders on, walking around in boots and like pants all the time. Which, first of all, in the summer is ridiculously hot. In the winter, it's a possibility because these things keep us very warm. Just wanted to put that out there. I'm sorry, you said pants are optional. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> oh, I do have an actual question. Oh. What do you do when you're not fighting fires? Fly planes and blow shit up. Oh, <laughs> great answer. Shit. Is that your pickup line? <laughs> I mean, yes. Sure. I, yes. I'm a pilot. You want to see what I could do to get you what? Uh, <laughs> you're like, wait, hold on. Are you a pilot or a fireman? Uh-huh. I'm both. Oh, you still do that? That's awesome. Yeah, still fly planes and blow shit up. Not blow shit up, but I would like to blow shit up eventually. That would be awesome. You can blow shit up. Just don't tell anybody. <laughs> yeah, but the government, they like... That's why you don't tell us. the damn government. <laughs> just open, just roll the window down and then just toss a fucking Like a grenade acne out. version of dynamite down. I imagine a grenade... I'm I'm still on the Wiley Coyote thing. I like what you said. Also, it was good. Classic stick of dynamite. Ooh. Yo, can we talk about? So remember when you were a kid and you can get like a quarter stick of dynamite? Yeah. And like no. that was like a firework. No. Yeah. That, he's, just talking, he's talking about the um uh, M80s. Yeah, right? the M80s. That was like really just a quarter stick of dynamite. If you bought four of them, you have an actual stick of fucking dynamite. <laughs> Blows house up. I'm just saying. <laughs> no, I didn't fucking have that. <laughs> I was unsupervised. <laughs> I guess. That's I, what you do. That's what we... No, no. I was supervised because my father was, was the one that gave them to me. God damn it. I want you to be a real boy. Yeah. He's like, here, here's a quarter stick of dynamite. Have fun. <laughs> it's ridiculous. This will make Don't you a real your man, hand baby off. boy. And if you do, it's not my fault. You can't have a gun because you'll shoot your eye out. <laughs> Christmas time. Okay. All right. Hit, is there any more on there? Yes. In my line of work, I am required to put fires out. But if you want to start one, call me. Oh! Oh! Uh- Wow. Oh, it's getting a little hot in this bedroom. I'm just saying. Mm, yeah. I I read something on Reddit. I was just wondering. Uh, what time do you get off work, Scotty? Uh, normally six o'clock in the morning. Maybe a few times after that. Ooh, good one. Good one. I like it. I like it. I like it. It's not groping if you have gloves on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I beg to differ. Very, very true. If it's wet enough, I'm going to need a snorkel. Oh, dive on <laughs> in, if you will. I'm about to gotcha. dive Hope you got your flippers in. on. I'm about to make a, That's the one. I'm about to make a career change because I'm about to dive in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Stay safe at night. Sleep with the fireman. Oh. oh. Easy one. I like that one. I like that one. I like that one. I swear to God, if you get a girlfriend after this. <laughs> I you, demand royalties. I demand okay. royalties. Just be like, I must have it all. That's like the proximity bang. <laughs> <laughs> the proximity bang is almost as good as the real bang. Oh my god, it is. I very, love doing the proximity true. bang. Yo, this man is the best wingman of all time. Have you ever have you ever heard of the proximity bang? It sounds familiar. I got it from How I Met Your Mother. It's that like I'm in a, a very loving, committed relationship, so mm-hmm. obviously I, I can't go fooling around. Yeah. So what I like to do is I like to get my friends laid. Yeah, he's go. great at it. And I call that that's my proximity bang. So like when oh, some when I set somebody up and it works out, it's like, oh, that's almost as good. That's awesome. As getting laid yourself. He does demand details. Ooh. There is a price. Ooh. There's a price. I, I need to know. What is the price? The I price. need to know these fucking deets. You need to know everything. I need to know the deets. I see the DMs where it did not happen. 
That the is Dems accurate. From the top. And one more. You want to go for a ride along? Then later, I can show you my truck. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Insert pterodactyl noises. <laughs> and I would be like, you want to go for a ride? Then later, I can take you in the truck. <laughs> yes, son. Get inside. Oh, my Buddy. God. Yeah. Have, have you been keeping up with the fires in California? I have not, but I know about them. Good, because shit's depressing. It is Absolutely. Sad. People losing their houses. Shit's burning down. They can't stop it. They're trying to make a serious stop on the fires. Um, people have been sending... I mean, honestly, firefighting is a dangerous job, but wildland firefighting is like a lot more dangerous because they don't have really protective gear. Why not? They're, they're out there in like some like long pants and a shirt I with do. a water pack because they're not in the fire. Most of the time, they're around the fire, working in the fire. But wildland fires can spread so rapidly and so fast that they can be surrounded by the fire at any time if they're not paying attention. Mm -hmm. Like it, there's a video you can see where you can be for the viewers at home, 20 yards away working, digging a trench to kind of make a fire line to kind of stop it. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. And the fire can surround you before you get three feet wide because that's how fast it moves. Really? Fire is a living, breathing thing. A lot of people don't know that. It breathes, it eats, <laughs> everything. It does it, poop. Yeah. I do have a question. Yes. Who started that fire? Um, If you're talking about our president and what he said, then the citizens themselves started the fire. Oh, gosh dang, <laughs> citizens. It's California's fart, fault, fault for the fire. Fart. Fart. <laughs> <laughs> Californians farted, boom, fire. Uh, I mean, that's a very possibility if you light it on fire. <laughs> Flaming fart, anyway. No, but for real, do you know who started the fire? I do not know who started the fire, but okay. from what we were told, it was the Californians, which is kind of like a broad statement because it's like a fire in Delaware, and they go, yeah, a Delawarean started the fire. First of all, you don't know if it's an actual Delawarean because it could have been somebody out of state who started the fire. Also, no shit. Duh. Oh, no, really, Delawarean started the fire. The fire happened. It wasn't a fucking piece of fire. I feel like that's obvious. You can do it with any state. Oh, we got this fire in Texas. Who do you think started the fire? We know it's man-made. Probably a fucking Texan. Wow. Oh, my God. Fucking news this to me, This guy's Sherlock a genius. Holmes. We should make him the president. Oh, oh my wait. God. <laughs> <laughs> well, it could have been, you know, electricity. It could have been electricity. Electricity. Or, like, lightning, which is also electricity. Honestly, I think like the general start of the fires, it was just dry and there was the perfect conditions. That's all. There's a great, uh, I listened to a podcast called 99% Invisible uh -huh. and they did, uh, I believe a three part series or a two part series on fires in California Ooh. and how to prevent fires in California and the design ways that you can pre prevent fires in California. Anybody listening to this that actually gives a fuck about the fires in California, I highly recommend you listen to that. I'm going to link that shit in the description because it's incredible. Boom, Is boom, it? Boom. I would like to listen because I hate to look things up because I never know if I'm getting a biased fucking uh, article. Do you know what I mean? Uh, everybody knows what you mean because anybody can say anything about anything and be like, oh, yeah, that gate over there was yellow. I seen it. And then you're like, OK, the gate was yellow because you're never going to travel to California to find out if the gate's yellow. Exactly. So I just have a hard time following the news just because i feel like i'm reading biased news no matter where i go i actually there's a lot of farm and ems that do watch the news i actually don't i get depressed enough not depressed enough but i get enough sad stuff with my job already i don't need to add more stuff like how do we go from a nation that was like one school shooting would be national news across the world to like school shootings happening every day and it's a normal right. thing and it's just local news and nothing's done about it. I'm saying if South Park makes fun of it, we need to change it. Absolutely. <laughs> it's true. I understand. Hashtag facts. Well, Scotty, in general, we have one final question that we ask our guests. Boom, because boom, these boom. are people that are unappreciated or underappreciated or misunderstood. If there was one thing that you want people to know about firefighters or EMT professionals or first responders or any of those... What do you wish you could fucking tell the world to get them to get it? There's two things, actually. 
I'm ready. Hey, I said one thing, god damn it. But I'm giving two. God damn it. Just the put, guests, I'm a fucking rebel. Our guests Just are going put rogue. and at the end, and it still counts as one. Boom. All right. So Please explain your answer. Or also, maybe. The first thing is please stop calling 911 for stupid crap. Like, if you have a toe pain... Or <laughs> like, no, nah, I'm dead. I am so serious. <laughs> Are you dead ass? I am so serious. We oh, literally go hilarious. for like toe pains and stuff like that. Like, oh my god. And like some people, I understand because they don't have a way to get to the hospital. Like nobody can take them. But remember, Uber is everywhere, and they call nine one one. Uber is going to be a lot cheaper than your nine one one bill. It I'm is. Just saying. Ambulances are expensive, and then we're gonna bill you for them, and then we're gonna come for you, and then your credit's gonna suck, and then oh, life's gonna no. continue because it's gonna go to that collections. Took a turn. If people don't, hey, that's you know, good to know. But I'm just saying. Are like, you advocating that Uber is better than the ambulance? It's really I'm abulate. I'm ab- advocating. <laughs> abulating. I'm advocating that ambulances should not be used as Uber. I like what you say. And. Also, see, see, see. also <laughs> continuing for the people that are listening, semicolon. When you see shootings <laughs> and stuff like that, EMS taking their time to get on scene is because we have to wait for police to come and clear the scene. And a lot of people don't know that, and that is a big topic that people don't realize. And people think we're not going to that neighborhood because it's poor, and we don't like those people, and we're taking our time. Actually, most of the time we get there before the cops, and we have to stage blocks away because we're not safe to go in. Because if there's a shooting or a weapon of some sort, we are not allowed to go in. Because how would you feel if you're trying to kill somebody, and then the person just shows up like, "Hey, I know you're trying to kill this guy, but I'm going to save his life." Mm-hmm. You're going to try to stab <laughs> that guy because you're like. I'm trying Stop to fucking it. kill this guy. Stop. I'm trying to kill that guy. Stab, stab. <laughs> you're really stab, making it hard to kill this guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When you're like saving the person's life. So people don't care and they try to hurt EMS and 911 as well as police officers. So as EMS and fire, we didn't have to before, but we have to now wear bulletproof vests when we go out in the calls. Are you serious? I'm so serious. Bulletproof and stab proof vest. Like. It just it just changed the world because like you see him walking in with these vests on. Not everywhere is wearing them, but a lot of the places that deal with those type of situations, like close to cities and stuff like that, have to worry about it because there's a chance that you know we can be shot at, we can be threatened with a weapon. So now we have to wait till police come on scene to clear the scene before we can go on scene. And then they think like, oh, we'll look in better neighborhoods. You know, you guys come faster. And I was like, because in better neighborhoods, they don't have weapons trying to kill us. So we can go right into the scene and give you emergency assistance can right away. right down that pole. Yep. Right down that pole. Right into your DMs. Right down and into get- them DMs. Kermit with the T. <laughs> and then we can, we can give you like medical assistance right away. And it's just a lot of stuff people don't realize and people don't notice because they're like, they're just thinking like, okay, well. EMS didn't get here and this person shot. And I'm like, well, if we go in there and then we get shot, what good are we? We just added another patient to the situation and we have to bring two more BLS because we're useless because we just got shot. Just saying. Ran over. It's cool. I liked all of it. It was good stuff. That's why we get that's why we get people on the show. Yes. So that well, we like to end out the podcast the same way we end out every single podcast. We play Shots. a little bit of a game. Oh no. <laughs> We have more shots if you want more shots after the show. No no judgment here. Woo! But shot, 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 we have to shot. finish this first. <laughs> this shit has to be editable. Oh, okay. I'm yeah. so ready. So the way we end out every single podcast is with an improv game. Ooh. And the way the game works is is like a game of telephone, but not. <laughs> I'm going to say a word. And then you, Scott, are going to think of the first word that comes to your mind based off of Penis. my word. Oh. Snitzel. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's got to relate to his word. Oh, sorry. Sorry. And then right. Morgan is going to think of the first word that comes to her mind based off of your word. And, and then it's going going to go in a circle or in this case, a triangle. Ooh, We're going to do three the rounds. Bermuda triangle. Son. Got to do three rounds of this. You won't return. I will not return. Now, you lose the game if you cannot think of a word. It's a pretty quick game. Uh-huh. Or if you repeat a word. Oh, okay. Somebody take care of my dogs if I don't return. <laughs> Goodbye, Titus. Rocks. <laughs> Rocks. <laughs> oh, fish. 
Rockfish. <laughs> Water. Ocean. <laughs> Minerals. Oils. Solvents. Salt? <laughs> Pepper? <laughs> Food? Coolman. Fuck me. I can't think of Later. Anything. Oh. I thought we were not going. <laughs> that means I <laughs> lost. Your, <laughs> it's your turn, sonny boy. Pick a word. Hats. Clothes? Pants. People. Shoes? Hats. You whore. Hats again. Hats from the top. That's a double loss. Oh, you know what that is. You know what that is. Dr. Fish. More shots after the show. Do Morgan. Oh, I said Dr. Fish. Oh, I wasn't listening. Dr. Fish. Can't, you already did fish. I'm so sorry. I saw a fish at the Baltimore Aquarium and it was called the Dr. Fish. I would hope you saw fish at the Baltimore Aquarium. You <laughs> whore, but it was called a Dr. Fish and I really giggled at it. It's one word. All right, Venom. Spider-Man. Yeah, that's right, uh, son! Uh, I, I was about to say something. Yeah, I, made a word. I meant you weren't, though. I, I didn't know I had to be that quick. Yeah, you had be to be quick, snappy. I was about to say Deadpool. I'm no, sorry. day. No, we don't like it. Slow. I'm sorry. I slow. I was slow. Like the firemen in California. Ooh, no, I'm just kidding. Shots fired. Oh, shots fired. Shots fired. I'm just, I'm shots just fired. kidding. Oh, no. More you know he's not coming to your mail. house if it burns down. <laughs> like we get mail. <laughs> <laughs> we got mail one time. <laughs> In the back of an Uber. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, real quick question. Yes. Do Uber drivers ever get asked to go upstairs? Yes, there is a possibility. All I've, right. I know a few Uber and Lyft drivers that have been... Um, Do they have to be smexy? Not necessarily, because not everybody you pick up is smexy. I mean, the Uber drivers. I mean, if you're smexy, you're, you're going to get it a lot more. Absolutely. That's Fair enough. That's obvious. You're smexy. People are going to be like, oh my God, would you just like drive me to my house and never leave? And I'd be like, Uber's everywhere, bitch. After you have sex and then you leave. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're we're randomly pull it out. We anyway, it. Sorry. Do it. Woo. Thank you very much for listening to the Maximum Mediocrity Podcast. Thank you very much, Scotty Mangum, for coming on the show. Is there anything that you would like to promote? Anything that is going on in your life that you would like the people to know about? Woo! Fair enough. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> um, I would like to people know that just be kind in life. Just pay it forward. Everybody pay it forward. That's Who doesn't like their thing. food paid for? Go online, pay for somebody's food. And that's a good like, thing to say. Like fast food, not like grocery store because that's expensive unless you're like rich. But like, that'd be great too. If you're rich, do it. Yeah, if you're rich, do it. But either way. Treat the people around you good. Pay it forward sometimes. That's a really good message for this holiday season. In which the most this ep- magical time of the year. It's the most magical time of the year right now. And it's a good message to tell the people. So uh, once again, thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, be good to each other. Wear a condom, etc. Drugs are bad. Stay in school. Drugs are bad. Stay in school. Schnitzel. Hello, this is your friendly neighborhood podcast host here again, David, and I just wanted to talk to you a little bit more uh, before we end out the podcast, since this is our last episode of the year. Now, don't worry, we're not taking a break. We're going to be coming right back at the beginning of January with a brand new episode. Now, I do apologize. Normally, we like to make our episodes release on the 1st and the 15th. I know that we've been a little bit delayed this year, but we've gone through a lot of changes and we're still trying to adjust to it. So thank you so much for being patient with us and thank you so much for your understanding. But like I said, we were very busy this year. We doubled how many podcasts we put out a month. We did our first convention. We had a booth and everything. We even did our first panel and it was so much fun and we can't wait to do more in the future. And I could not have done any of that by myself. So... The first person I want to thank is actually my girlfriend, Abby Moss, who has been helping out behind the scenes ever since we started this podcast. She's been helping with finding guests and maybe interview questions and really every decision that we make, uh, I generally bring her in on and she's a great sounding board and I cannot do this without her. And uh, I'm just so happy that she 
uh, has the con going expertise that helped us with our conventions. Uh, we even have a new logo coming next year that, that she helped with. Uh, we couldn't have done any of this without her. So I definitely want to uh, absolutely thank her for giving up as much time as she has to help out with us. And the second person I want to thank, hopefully you know who she is already, it's our very own Morgan Miller. She came on this year, and she has been a great co-host. She has dove headfirst into the podcasting world. She knew nothing about it, and she is a quick learner, and she has been the biggest help I could have ever asked for. We absolutely could not have started doing two podcasts a month without her help. She's been doing almost all the booking. She has been also a great sounding board for ideas, and she's been coming up with really cool stuff, and I am so excited to have her on this team. And I can't even say that I'm the main person that makes this podcast anymore. It has definitely turned into a group effort, and I'm so happy to have uh, all the help that I, that I do have. And the third person that I want to thank is, well, it's you, my dear listener. We absolutely could not have done anything that we did this year without your support. Even just a few new people checking out something new, just going into the void. You don't know if it's going to work out, but you just gave us an hour of your time, and that means the world to us that people were willing to reach out and try something new, uh, not knowing if it was going to pay off. And hopefully it has. We do our best to make the best show that we can for you and for ourselves. So uh, I love hearing from you. We all love hearing from you. And I just want you to know that you have really changed the lives of uh, a few strangers on the internet. And you gave a voice to people who wanted to talk about their passions that didn't have a way to talk about it in a public forum uh, rather than just their friends or their family about the, something that they want to talk about, something that they absolutely love. And every interview that we've had, uh, you can just feel this radiating love for what they do or whatever they're coming on to talk about. And that's the real joy of the show and in, in, in making it is just hearing people talk about something that they love. And I, and I hope that that translates over because that's what this is all about. So I don't want to bore you too much. I know you have things to do. It's, it's the holidays. Uh, we all got to get some gift shopping done. We all got to meet some folks. And if you don't, then you got to find something else to do. But you can't just sit around listening to podcasts all day. Trust me, it's not the greatest thing. So once again, uh, thank you so, so much for listening to the Maximum Mediocrity Podcast. Uh, and I hope you have a wonderful and safe holidays. Have a happy new year. And I will see you in January. Wow.